Right Autopilot has completely blown way past where you asked it to go. Today. It's pulling G's now. Yeah, let's... We're flying around north of Toronto with a kid who soloed around the world. What in the world is going on? And then troubleshooting our way home. This is good, that's good. Um, Pulling circuit breakers? Yeah. Okay, so we've got that one. Terrain system not available. Damn. I haven't Sorry, seen we'll no GPS signal since I was flying in a thunderstorm off. over India. I get to fly with a lot of unique and talented aviators. And the pilot I'm meeting today definitely fits that bill. What this kid accomplished was incredible. Matt Guffmiller is a young pilot with an inspiring story. I flew this plane, set the world record as the youngest person to fly solo around the world. It's a pretty different type of flying than what I had done up to that point. I went from my longest flight being like probably three or four hundred miles to 2,300 miles in the space of a couple months. So how much time have you got now in that airplane? A thousand hours. Yeah, that's pretty cool. When I started flying, I was totally convinced that you know I was just going to do it for fun. It was just going to be this, you know, go up in like a 150, buzz around town or something, not actually go anywhere, things like that. And somehow it evolved from that to like you know flying bigger and faster planes all the time, and eventually like you know hearing about this other kid that was going to go fly around the world, I could do that. I didn't really care too much about like you know, actually setting this record or anything. Like my focus was just getting around the world. So let's go flying and talk about how he pulled it off. Check one, two, you got me? Yep. Why did I wear jeans? <laughs> what year is this thing? This is an 81. But the panel is obviously... Yeah, right before I did the uh, flight around the world, the owner did uh, all new panel and a new engine. So how many hours did the engine have on it when you took off to go around the world? Probably like 15, 10 or 15. Oh my god. I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but everything I've heard is like the first couple hundred hours are the sketchiest. I knew it was broken in well. Yeah, I mean, I, I had 30 hours going across you know, sort of the U.S. up to like St. John's before I went across any meaningful amount of water, but... So flying single engine over the ocean is a pretty big deal. My friend JP is actually currently doing it in a Cessna 210. Boom! We got flight chops on the 210. This is kind of a cool spot. Both Matt and I helped him get ready for that flight. Matt joined him for some legs. You can check that on both their channels. The links will be in the description. Okay, we'll just do a run up here. Anyway, the flight we're about to do takes us through some of Canada's busiest airspace. Last time I did this trip, I was a lot lower and slower without a transponder. So if you missed that, please check it out at flightchops.com. Switches, that stuff's good, that's good. You're buckled, I'm buckled. Let's do a little circle and see. Yeah, I mean, you get pretty good right visibility down. here. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, there's nobody over here. Feeling traffic Bonanza 7 Hotel Pop is departing runway 27, Burlington. Wind's basically down the runway, we'll go full power. Okay, so nobody's on the conflicting runways. Okay, so we'll just make a right hand turn here and just go northbound while we call them for the clearance. We called clear of the zone on the CTAF and then contacted Toronto Terminal to pick up our IFR. Uh, who is the Bonanza calling? That's Bonanza November 367 Hotel Papa, just off of Burlington, looking for an IFR to Lindsay. 7 Hotel Pop, squawk 4010. 4010, 7 Hotel Pop. I can give you a couple options here. If you stay BFR, I can give you a much more direct route towards Lindsay, or I can give you the IFR now, but I'll have to bend you a little bit to the west. Uh, we'll take the more direct route. Okay, uh, 7 Hotel Papa, not above 2000, and are you familiar with Brampton at all? Uh, okay, not above 2000, and that's affirmative, 7 Hotel Pop. Okay, uh, 7 Hotel Papa, just arrange to fly over Brampton, then you can go direct Lindsay, and I'll have the IFR when you're uh, northeast of Brampton. That's one of the big advantages of having your instrument ticket, is like you can just file IFR, you go there, you don't have to worry about the slight little differences in airspace between you know, the US and Canada or wherever. You just go, if it turns out that it is overcast 700 or something over there, we still get in. If it's not, uh, then you know, we still get in. And so uh, you know, that just makes it really simple. Get your instrument ticket, you get comfortable in an airplane, you know, fly, fly frequently, and more so than weather, it's just knowing where you can stop and actually find av gas, or you know, where you can stop and still make it, still have enough fuel to make it to your destination. 
I, I was amazed that you caught the frequency because most people be like, sorry, what? Say it again, frequency, but you're like, got it. Because I guess you're so used to hearing numbers and just getting them in your mind and quickly punching them in. Right. Especially flying in the Northeast or flying out in California, you really get used to, uh, you know, just, just catching a lot of stuff happening really fast on the radio. And especially when you do it in another country and it's really fast and in some accent that you don't understand. It's super easy to look up here. Like, I can just go nearest. Right, and that's why it's handy to really be familiar with your airplane. Right. Yeah, that's my biggest problem. I'm jumping in and out of so many different types all the right. time. Like, I'm not, avionics to throw me. That's why I like using four flight. It's the one thing that never changes, whatever I get in and out of. Sure. Grampton Unicom, Bonanza 7 Hotel Pompas, 3 to the southwest, transiting uh, to the northeast, 2500. Rampton. Yeah, this thing is fast, man. 7 Hotel Pop, are you back with me? A firm. Roger, you can climb not above 3,000, IFR clearance in about 5 or 6 miles. Not above 3,000, 7 Hotel Pop. Alright, so he just gave us 3,000 because now we're on an IFR? So and previously... We're, we're not IFR, we'll get the IFR in a couple months. Okay, so you just expect it? Yeah. And you're just using the autopilot, you just dialed it in? Uniform. Yeah. 7 Hotel Pop adding 050 and you're cleared to the Lindsay via radar vectors. Maintain 3,000. 050, 3,000, cleared to Lindsay via radar vectors, 7 Hotel Pop. So now we're IFR. On a day like today, you know, every, obviously it's pretty simple, the weather's great, but when you're flying over the ocean, you know, you have to all, you have to have a lot more information. And so the, the kind of information that you have to have, you know, really varies by flight. If you're flying in potential icing conditions in the winter or something like that, you need a ton of weather information. If you're flying over the ocean, you need good weather information, but there's not a ton of it available. Uh, you just need to know all the logistical details. Where can you land and actually get fuel? Where can you land and still make it to your destination with the fuel that you have? All those sorts of things. And so that's you know, just kind of the case with every flight. What I was most interested in hearing about was how Matt dealt with extended range fuel tanks and how that affected weight and balance. So one, you know, one of the parts about flying around the world is that I had to take all the extra seats in the back, all the seats in the back out, and add extra fuel tanks. There's also an STC that's purely paperwork. You can up the gross weight to 4,000 pounds, and all you get a piece of paper saying that it's okay. And you know, like good luck, test pilot. So yeah, these guys doing this have to figure out how to fly their planes way over gross. Matt actually had a ferry permit allowing him to fly up to 4,500 pounds when he needed to. So on these long legs, I was like 26% over gross. Have you ever flown a Bonanza before? No. You want to give it a shot? Oh, uh, just hand fly it for a bit? Yeah. Yeah, sure, okay. Yeah, throw three, that over there. Probably, the way this is rigged, it likes to pull to the right just a little bit. Okay. So just be aware of that, but there's electric trim over here if you want. Oh, that's stiff control. Is the auto pass still on? It, no, no. Is that stiff? It's, um, yeah, let me see it for a second. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, so we're going 150 knots, right? So there's like a decent, decent amount of airflow over the control switch. But if it's trimmed out nice, yeah, obviously today is a little bit bumpy, but for the most part, it'll, it'll be pretty stable. But is a surprisingly stable airplane. There's a little bit of, of roll instability sometimes. 5,000. 5,000, 7 Hotel Papa. Yeah, in 2,000 feet a minute. Yeah, that's pretty cool. By the time we get there, we're going to start a descent. Fast airport. The conditions were so nice that we just decided to cancel IFR and hand fly the rest of the way to Lindsay. Lindsay traffic, Bonanza, 7 Hotel Pampas, 10 to the southwest, landing Lindsay. There are right-hand circuits on a uh, right-hand pattern, as you guys call it. Do other countries call it circuits? Um, yeah. Yeah, circuits, yeah, probably most countries call it circuits. You Americans, eh? How yeah. different? Well, I mean, I think we probably had it first. All right, so we got gear coming down. Yeah, gear's down, first notch of flaps. And Crystal Lake, Lindsay traffic in 7 Hotel Pompa, show final runway 31, Crystal Lake. Yeah, that was a very good one. Well, I mean, you landed nice and short. You do have to backtrack here. Sure. I don't think anyone's coming, so we're probably fine with the backtrack. Yeah, Lindsay traffic in 7 Hotel Pompa, uh, backtracking runway 31. Yeah, you guys call it backtracking. Yeah, what do you guys call it? Back taxiing. Oh, interesting. Okay. Cool. So there are definitely some subtle differences between the Canadian and American aviation standards. But I brought Matt here for some local pickerel and chips and another delicacy from the north. Nope. That is a butter tart. What is a butter tart? <laughs> I still don't know. Yeah, I don't even know if I can answer that question. It's very, 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 very sweet. I can't eat a whole one. It's like an instant punch in the face of sugar. This place is kind of legendary for really good ones. So if this is your first butter tart. This is the right place to come. Okay. I'm going to try Canadian 
Lindsay Airport butter tart. It's like we don't have forks, so you just yeah, you just you just eat it over the plate or whatever. <laughs> Very sweet. Oh, it's pretty good. First Canadian butter tart. It's pretty good. So after lunch, I took Matt on a tour of cottage country where there's some pretty awesome lakes where you can actually catch pickerel just like the ones we'd eaten. You really feel the speed when the gear goes up. Right. It's amazing. You go from sort of downtown Toronto, hop in an airplane for 25 minutes, and you're out here in this nice little cottage country with all these lakes and everything. Oh yeah, here. we take it for granted, but it is pretty awesome, yeah. So what made you land on the Bonanza as your choice? I, I had this problem of finding a plane. And you know, I didn't have a plane, I didn't even have a car. You know, it wasn't like my parents were gonna go buy me a plane or something like that. So I had to find somebody who I could convince to lease a plane to like an 18 or 19 year old with 500 hours to go fly around the world. And you know, I found this guy in San Diego who was willing to lease me this. It turned out to be the perfect plane. You know, it's got uh, enough power and enough room to hold all this extra fuel that you need. There's all kinds of people that have done it. They've you know, done trips like that in Bonanzas. Uh, so it's, you know, it's very easy to, to find resources and, and people to learn from. But there's a reason that the Bonanza is the you know, longest continually manufactured airplane in the world is that it, it is so versatile. You know, you can fly this thing around the world, you can have like five people in bags, or you can, you know, take off in a thousand feet and land in a thousand feet. I, I love it because of that. Fly the Amoeba 3 the autopilot on here and we'll see if we can get it clearance. What is the autopilot doing right now? That's weird, eh? Yeah. Usually, I tell people, like 99% of the time that I think the autopilot is acting up, it's because I don't actually have it engaged. But I actually do this time. So I've. Is it turning? It's on altitude, it's not on, it's on no. heading. Right, so it's on heading, but this is in like GPS steering mode. I'm really curious to see where this goes. <laughs> yeah, we'll let, it, we'll let it keep turning. So we're, we're not in a hurry and yeah, we're in uncontrolled good. airspace. Beautiful day. It's pulling G's now. Yeah, let's, that was a fun experiment, but we're gonna call that good. So now we're like centered on this course. Let's just let's see what it does. So. It's gonna dive for the altitude that it's selected. But it looks like it's gonna turn right past your design. Yeah, I don't. What the hell? It's insane. Let's get a shot of that to show you that it is the way you expect it to be set up. Right. Now it's kind of shallowing out. Uh, so right. autopilot has completely blown. Westjet 589. Way past where you asked it to go. Like today. This is good. That's good. Yeah, that's good. 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 That's be banking that much. Here we go. Now it's rolling out a little bit. But is it right. heading? Is it heading toward that bug? Maybe. I guess. What What happens if I just put it in straight up heading mode? Yeah, so like the thing is, is like the flight director is over there. So clearly, expect runway two four right. Gonna pull the that one, and so let me make sure that I'm pulling the right stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, Phone circuit breakers. Yeah. Okay. So we've got that one. Trim and autopilot. Let's see, there, there's nothing else really that should affect this. But, but now trying to turn it on, it's not doing anything. I was there the day the autopilot right. <laughs> decided to depart the airplane. Well here, I'll turn us around and get us back on course. Do it nice and see if like, the autopilot wanted, maybe then it will come back on. This is real world troubleshooting. Level. It's not it's dangerous, dangerous, it's just inconvenient. Right. I'm going to try dialing it and turn. Yeah, let's see what happens if we go no, left. No. So you're going left and it's turning right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's so random, but it's also super frustrating. Because I have another six hours to get home. It's an hour hand flying. Yeah, one of the biggest things about situational awareness and just being ahead of any airplane is just knowing what to expect at any given point. Because then the moment that something you know, slightly different or unexpected happens, you immediately identify it. And I think that's the biggest thing about seeing you know, in front of the airplane. Is if you know, you know how everything should be right now, if you have some sense of what ATC is going to tell you to do next, then when there's something unusual, it just immediately clicks, okay, like, why is that different? Not just going with the flow, like, okay, whatever, they just told me to do this, I'll do that. Toronto, Bonanza, November 367, Hotel Papa. People are calling Toronto, go ahead. Yeah, Bonanza, November 367, Hotel Papa is about uh, 15 west of Lindsay, looking for an IFR to Burlington. 7-6, Hotel Papa, Roger, maintain VFR at all times, and Tarbo, 0 
Uh, we're at 4,000, we'll maintain VFR, November 367, Hotel Papa. It was cool to watch Matt troubleshoot in real time, and then the rest of this flight was pretty routine getting home. Yeah. Seven, Hotel Papa, I have your IFR clearance ready to copy. Go ahead. Seven, Hotel Papa, you're clear to the Burlington Airport, present position, direct Balmo, Bravo, Oscar, Lima, Mike, Oscar. Maintain 4,000 feet and your IFR is valid now. And uh, any chance we could get a routing uh, to the south, go right along the shoreline? Yeah, if you want to go VFR, you can go anywhere you'd like. And we decided to just cancel that IFR and go VFR to enjoy the view. Terrain system not available. No GPS. What the hell is going on with this stuff today? Damn. I haven't seen no GPS signal since I was flying in a thunderstorm over India. So as a guy that's been taking three years to work on my instrument rating, it was inspiring to see Matt work the system and fly with such confidence. Let's make this turn here. So I'm going to continue plugging away, and I'll share the training as I get it done. Thanks again to sponsors and supporters for allowing me to create this content. It's a lot of work, but it's really satisfying and rewarding to produce this stuff. Damn it. Uh, I kind of want to do one more just to, to show you that I can actually fly this thing. Please visit flightchops.com to sign up for our mailing list so we can reach you when I publish and play the monthly contest where we're giving away tons of stuff. And of course, the back catalog is there with over 100 episodes. And as always, keep your flight chops sharp. Just spilled my water all over the place in that bump. <laughs>